Welcome everyone to our presentation about the recently introduced FlyTask architecture. We began uh, development of this architecture in 2017. Uh, it was merged into master in, two, uh, in 2018 and now it will be part of the release 1.9. Uh, I'm here together with uh, Dennis Manhart, my colleague from Unique Research. And uh, I myself am Matthias Grob and I'm now working at Autarian as a flight control engineer. Now, to begin with, we start from the overview, because I, I'm sure you all know PX4, but uh, I want to be, make sure that we are all on the same page and that you know uh, what part of PX4 we're talking about. So we have an autopilot PX4, uh, we have uh, input data like sensors and RC, and we have uh, output data like commands to an actuator that make our vehicle do something. And in between, we have a lot of modules that are part of PX4. We have drivers to get the input to our modules. We have drivers to get the output to our actuators. And in between, we have a, a, a processing a line of like estimation and control. Now, for all the different vehicle types, like multi-copter, fixed-wing, VTOL, we have different uh, such processing lines of modules, but uh, right now we will focus on the multi-copter uh, control pipeline because uh, that's where the flight task, ar flight task architecture was introduced. So at the beginning we have a sensors module that takes the date sensor data in and we have the estimator. So the last presentation was exactly at that point. Then we have a control pipeline for the different states. For multi-copter, that is position, attitude, and rate. And that's uh, where, you, where you put in your set point to make your vehicle act in a certain way in a different mode. And the red part here is where, on a high level, if you want to go uh, make your vehicle to go to a certain point in 3D space, you want to put your set point in. And that's also like where, where every, everyone was adding his, his uh, particular mode, basically. Then on the top, we have also certain uh, housekeeping modules, like the commander keeping an overview over everything and like jumping in if something goes wrong, and uh, Mavlink and Logger to handle communication to the outside world and uh, enable log analysis afterwards. Now let's jump into that red spot here. Now, the position controller was where you put in your set points to make your vehicle uh, behave in a certain way. And you might ask yourself, why should you change anything about that? Like, it was working, all the modes were behaving like you expect, so why should you change anything at all and introduce uh, a lot of problems and complexity? Now, there, was already, there were already a lot of problems and complexity, because the position controller became that center of behavior. Everyone was adding his stuff, and the, the lines of that module peaked at 3.5k lines of code for one module. Now, all these flight modes that we support were scattered over this file. So it, you, have, you would have, just as an example here, all these if statements, you would check, am I in my mode? Then I do something else, or overwrite set points. And this, at the end, gets really hard to debug. And I see, we've seen as a requirement for all the companies to, to enable differentiation for their product, they want to have their own modes and their own vehicle behavior. So we have to change something about that to make it easier. So the biggest goal is to simplify for any developer, any company to add a new mode or behavior of the vehicle. So that is our main goal. And for this to achieve, it has to be modular and easy to debug. This brings us to a library design where there is one class for each behavior, for each mode, for each type of, let's say, smoothing, follow me, all these different kinds of things you can do with your drone. And for this to work, all, all the modes need to have a clear output interface to, to interface to the pos 
core position control, the PID, which you rely on, which is already there and you don't have to uh, take care of yourself. So, as I already said, one of the main goals is to, that you don't have to care about the position control, so there is one class for this and it runs for every flight task that you uh, produce yourself. One other goal was the flight task consumes any input you want. Let's say if you follow something, you want to know where the target is, you for sure want to know where the vehicle is. So you can consume all the topics and all the data you want, but you need to also take care yourself if that data is ready. And if it's not ready, then you need to be able to report that you cannot run. So then the rest of the system can take care to enable a fail-safe to switch to another task or mode. And in the end, one, one of the big um, goals is also to make it easy to run this on the microcontroller. It should not have too much overhead. Now you might think, where should that all go? I said the position controller is the center of all the behavior, and we want to re basically remove it from there. I have to say, that is not the case. It's now in a library in that folder that is written there. And it's still instantiated in the position controller, but the position controller only calls it. So there you will not have a lot of change anymore. It, all the flight tasks are basically in front of the position controller, so they are set point generators to act on the position controller and give it commands and all the interfaces are your messages. So everything you subscribe in your flight task is uh, through your, and also the output to the position control module are your messages. So you can potentially move your flight task to another module, to a separate companion computer if the architecture is further enhanced. So it's portable, basically. Now I said that the output interface of a flight task is the important thing, such that all the flight tasks run with the same position controller. And that output interface, the, the main part of it, is the set point. So the set point is designed to enable trajectories. A trajectory has a series of position, position set points, velocity set points, acceleration set points. And some others, part of them are just for logging, part of them are for uh, legacy reasons. Now, any, now you might think, ooh, if I write a flight task, I have to set a lot of set points. But you don't have to set all of them. You can produce any combination that suits your needs. For example, if you just want to hold position, you would set the position set point and leave everything else as NAN. NAN in this Interface means it's not set, you should not control it, I don't care about it. So for example, you could also set a velocity, set the position to NAN, and you will act on that velocity and the position will not be held anymore. Additionally, in that interface, we also have constraints. Because a naive solution to go somewhere, for example, is just to set a position set point there, but then you want to limit the speed to go there. That's where you do it. Now, just to say, the, the, the set points, this interface, everything that you put out in your flight task is locked in a message. And also the, the set point that in the end gets executed, for example, if you set a position set point and the position controller generates a velocity set point, and thrust out of that is also locked. So it's really easy to debug in the end where your bug is, where your error happened. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. So now let's go over the key concept of the library. So the flight task library um, can have multiple tasks, but only one task can run at a time. Um, it also has only one memory slot, which has that, that, that slot has actually the size of the largest task, which further explains why there can only be one task at a time. Um, then the library has a factory class, which is the 
which is called Flight Tasks with an S, um, which is the interface to the running task. So with this factory class, you can start, stop, or um, switch between tasks. And it also provides you the output of the running task. So through this factory class, you will get your position set points. Then there's a base class called Flight Task. The base class is an abstract class and therefore defines um, the method that each task has to have implemented. And it also defines what default method each, um, each task will have. Um, then there's a concept of core flight task. Those are the tasks which are fully integrated into the PX4 um, firmware, which corresponds to a flight mode. What that basically means is that you cannot remove or add those tasks without generating conflict with the PX4 firmware. In contrast, there are added flight tasks, and they, in theory, can be added and removed at any time, and they are triggered by a Mathlin command. I specifically said in theory because it's still a work in progress and you still have to, do, to go through some manual steps. But um, well, later on in the to-do list, you will see that that is uh, on our to-do list. <laughs> um, then we also, like in order to create a new flight task, there are right now two, two options. So either you use inheritance, where you can inherit functionalities from an already existing task, or you use the utility library, which provides you utility classes and functions. So now let's have a look at the architecture. So here, does it actually work? Yeah. Okay, so here you see an UML diagram of the, the current existing uh, flight task library in PX4. Um, it's not complete, and it also will not cover everything, but uh, it gives you a good overview. So here on the left, we ha have our factory class, flight task, which contains our base class, the um, flight task. And to the right, we have all the existing tasks. Um, the, our factory class, has a, as you can see, a bunch of get methods. And those get methods are just wrappers for the method with the same name of the running task. So what that, for instance, means, like, if you, let's say, call get position set point, internally, like uh, here, Internally, it will call the get position set point here from the, the running task, which will return the set points. And the set points are the position, velocity, acceleration, and force set points. Um, in addition, the factory class has one important method, which is called update. The update method has to be called at every iteration loop. What it does, it basically tells a flight task or tells the running task that it, now it's time to update the output. So if you don't call this method, the output of the running task will just stay constant. Internally, it's the same as with the get method. It will call um, the update method of the, the running task. And as you can see here, the base class, uh, the update method of the base class is a pure virtual method, which just means that every task on this side has to have an update method. Um, in addition, the base class has a bunch of other methods. So for instance, here we have an activate method. This activate method will be called um, at the beginning when, a, when the, the task starts to run. Um, there are a bunch of other ones. Maybe also important to, to, to mention is that it has a private method, um, which is called evaluate vague local position. And what it does here is it subscribes to the, the position estimate, and therefore, each of those tasks will automatically have already information about the, the position estimate, like position velocity and, oops, sorry, to go back. Okay, apologize. Um, then you also can see here a bunch of inheritances, which is indicated by the white arrows. And um, well, while inheritance makes things really easy to um, take all functionalities of existing tasks, it also adds a lot of complexity and um, code becomes more difficult to read. So what we also added is uh, a utility library, which is in here, which has utility classes and functions. And those classes can then be used in the, 
in the individual tasks. Task. So for instance, the, the, the smoothing part, which all it does, it just moves the set points a little bit, is right now um, used in all the smoothing tasks. So for instance, the, the positions move, or it's used in here, and so on. Um, I also would like to, to give some information about this class, the subscription array, which is contained in the, the, the factory class. The subscription array is an array of all the subscription um, required for all the tasks. But each subscription is only um, stored once. So that's just for optimization. Not that like every task requires to have its own um, file descriptor for the subscription. Now let's go on. Um, in order to add a new task to the fly task library, it's quite simple because fly task follows the modern CMake structure. So here on the left, you see the tree of the fly task library. And um, as you can see, there's a, a top CMake list which defines the, the, the fly task library. Then we have um, um, all our factory classes and we have a folder called task with a bunch of subfolders. Each subfolder is a task. And each subfolder is as well also a library. So if you now look in the middle, if you look, for instance, at the order folder, in here we have another CMake list which defines the, the, the order library, and we have two source files which implements the logic for the order. Like order in PX4 is basically mission or loiter or whatever, like everything which is, happens automatically. Um, the, the syntax or the, the name of the the source files is not random, but it has to follow a certain pattern. So there's always the name of the, the folders, so auto, prepared with flight task. The same applies to all other folders as well. Um, now, as an example, what you have to put in this to make it a, a valid library, what you have to put in the, into the CMake list, we now look at the orbit example. And in here, in the CMake list, what we add is just we, 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 defi we, we add a new, new target, like a library, which is called which is just the name of the, the source file. Then we add our dependencies to this library. In our case, the orbit depends on the fly task manual altitude smooth, which is another library, another task. And then we just add like the, the source files to the CMake. Um, yeah. And finally, so once we have uh, finished this step, then we have actually a valid library, a valid task but we still have to add it to the fly tasks library. When we do that, if you go to the outermost CMake list and just add the name of the folder um, that we just created. So in our case, it's Orbit. Um, so now we created that, that new task, but we also want to be able to trigger it um, from the firmware, from PX4 Autopilot. And right now there are, there are two, two methods. The first method is for instance, you say, okay, well, so we have this PX4 position control mode, um, and I don't like the functionality. I would like to have, have it either smoother, or you want to have it just better. So instead of creating like new if statements in the existing task, what you do, you can just add a new task and control which task is run through a parameter. So for instance, the, the PX4 position control mode is right now covered with four different tasks. All those. So here we have the, the flight as manual position um, task, which is a general, like deals, does basically all the position related um, set point generation. And all the other ones just make it, I don't know, aggressive or, or smoother. So for instance, the sport mode just makes it a little bit more aggressive. That's why it hurts from flight task manual position. The flight task position smooth makes it smoother. And the flight task position smooth well is a jerk optimized smoothness. And um, which task at the end is run if position control is enabled is defined by the MC position control mode flag. The same logic um, um, is applied to the order mode. There currently we have two tasks. So we have the legacy task, which is this one. And we have, a, again, a Chirac optimized um, order task. Like when you fly a mission, this one will smooth um, the trajectory when you fly around the corners and which task at the end is executed or run is defined by this parameter. The second method to 
um, trigger a flight task, a new task, is through the math link um, commands. And in principle, if you would do that, you don't have to change anything in the firmware. But right now, there are still about, um, I think, seven steps required where you have to manually modify uh, things in the commander. And I broke it down in the seven step. I listed it here on the, on the presentation, but I will not go through them because it's quite boring. And if you want to add a new task, you can just look at, the, look at it and um, follow the instruction. But uh, it's not that interesting. So I will skip all this part. And I rather prefer to show a simple example. So let's assume we want to add a new task. And our um, constraints are that we want to trigger it via, via a, a parameter, so the auto mode. So basically, if we are in mission mode, then we want to control to this parameter what, uh, um, what task it should run. Then um, we want to fly our dummy task what we want, it should fly up and down, eight meters, and starting with, uh, with the upward direction. Then the, ori the origin of, um, of the starting point should be set at trigger time. We want to keep the horizontal direction when we fly up and down constant, so it shouldn't drift uh, left or to the right, or just like horizontally. And we want to rotate 45 degrees in one direction when we go up, once we turn back, we want to rotate the other way around. So the way we do it is quite simple. So first, we again go into our tree, add a new folder, which I call continuous here. I mean, I could also call it dummy or whatever. Um, then in, the, in this folder, we add our source files and a CMake list. In the CMake list, we then um, will do what, what I described before. We just define... Um, the, 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 the target as a library. And then here it's a little bit different since we now call it, so this one is in the outermost CMake list. Here we still have to add our new created task, but we don't add it as we did, as it described before. Since we are uh, modifying like one of the PX4 core flight modes, we have to add it to another list, which is the, it's called flight task all list. Here you see like all the the core PX4 flight modes, and we add it to here. Um, now we have to fill um, the source files. So in our HPP file, all we have to do is create, um, we have to include our base class, which is flight task, from which we, we inherit all the functionalities. And then we need to, to have two methods. So one is the update method, which I explained before, is required for every um, task. And I also need to add the active, I mean, I don't have to, but in this particular example, I, have, uh, I, I will add the activate method. Then I also need a pr uh, private member for setting the origin. So if you now look at our CPP file, is it, that's one, or? yeah, there should be, oh, no, okay, no, it's, no, it's CPP, okay, so what? so what we do in here, we, in the activate method, all we have to do is first, we have to also to activate our base class, then, in order to stay constant, have like a constant horizontal position lock, we set our position set point to the current position in the activate method. Our origin, because we want to go fly from the origin eight meters up and then eight meters down, so we need to know where we started. So I set our origin in the altitude direction, the Z direction, to our current position in the Z direction. Um, our yaw speed set point, our requirement said we want to re, uh, rotate 45 degrees. So I do that. I said our yaw speed is 45 degrees per second. And our velocity set point is minus one, well, minus one meter per second. We, in PX4, we have the net frame. So minus means you want to go upwards. So I say, okay, let's go with one meter per second upwards. Um, this method, as I explained, will only be called at the beginning of the task. So in our update function, which we will call that every iteration loop, we then um, just, so the difference is where we are right now, so our position, minus um, where we started. And if we are, if this difference is more than eight meters, and again, we are on net frame, that's why it's negative, it's more than eight meters, then all we do, we just flip um, 
what we have done before. So we say the velocity set point is now downwards, so that's why plus one, and the yaw speed set point is now the other way around, so it's just like multiplied by negative one. And if we reach again our origin, we do, well, we flip again. So we go then upwards and rotate in the other direction. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So all we then have to do is we have to extend our um, parameter. So in the MPC auto mode, we say, well, now case two is our continuous year. Um, and in the MC position controller, because it is a, a, a PX4 core flight mode, we then have to add one more case to it, where we basically then call the, um, our new task. And that's it. Like now, I mean, if you would run it, it would basically exactly do what I just described. It would go up and down, rotate in one direction, and then rotate in the other, right, other direction when it flies downwards. Um, yeah. So at the end of the presentation, I want to come to the to-dos or to the state where we are. The, as I said, this flight task architecture is now in stable 1.9 and all the uh, existing PX4 flight modes are in, within this architecture. Um, the remaining things to do are to, to improve the switching between tasks. So as you've seen, there are several methods to, to initiate a switching. Like It's not that simple to add it just from the outside via Mavlink message. You, uh, have to uh, also adjust the commander or something existing in the position controller. And also, while you switch, it could be that one task was actually doing something and the other task takes over and wants to do something completely else and there is a discontinuity in uh, set points which is not desired. Then, uh, as Dennis already mentioned a bit, uh, we have this inheritance structure which totally makes sense for free tasks, but as you have 20, it just grows and grows and gets uh, less, you lose the overview. So we want to actually make the tasks independent and just rely on uh, library implementation to not, not uh, like duplicate code, but to be able to reuse things. Uh, then we want to further simplify adding a new task. I mean, as you've seen, it has to do with the switching. So uh, in Commander, we have to do we have to improve Commander to make that, that process even easier. And then what I'm currently working on is the acceleration set point. As I've said, in, this, in, the, in the interface, there's an acceleration set point, but currently it's not executed, it's only locked, and I'm currently working on uh, executing this actually in the position controller. So we are at the end of our presentation, and I hope you have some questions. <laughs> you may raise them. Yeah? Okay, so the question was, the update method, which is mandatory for every task, it returns a bool. And uh, a lot of flight tasks now return true, just because it was we had to quickly implement them, but the idea is that if you return false, and you should return false if your data is not available, if some calculation went wrong, you realize, oh, it's not working, you should return false, and then the outside infrastructure makes sure that nothing bad happens, that you switch into a fail-safe, you stay in a safe uh, mode, and yeah, you don't just drift away and do nothing. So, okay, the, there's a follow-up question. What exactly happens if you return false? Right now, it's kind of work in progress. It's, it's not super nice what happens, but there is a fail-safe. So what happens if you return false? The position control module realizes, ooh, that task cannot run, and it will send the commander uh, 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 a vehicle command to switch mode, which is actually not what we want. We want to improve commander to have a... Uh, better handling of that situation. So there's a very good question. How can a task say that the actual behavior, the task that it had, is done? 
such that you can continue with the next one. Currently, there is no notion of done, but uh, I've, I've heard this feedback multiple times now, so I think it makes sense to add this functionality and then to, to let the rest of the infrastructure know, for example, that if you are in a mission, you do something that you can continue with the next uh, step in your mission. Um, and also... And also, I mean, I want to add something. Right now, the way it is implemented right now anyway is uh, the way that the commander does all the, the transitions. The commander, like he, like flight task itself just executes and it doesn't have a notion of, uh, it doesn't decide um, what transition, uh, to what next, what other task it has to trans transition to. But that's the commander. So right now it's still like a top down where the commander decides which mode well, because every mode is covered with a task, so it defines which mode is, um, has to run, and he does all the transition, and the task itself then just executes. But you're right, in the future we would like to have it a different, uh, different way. Yes, yeah, so the question is that now this is basically a refactor of the position control module and the question is does the commander follow with this refactoring of the and take care of this new structure? And uh, yes, I think that's really necessary but just to give you a perspective, I said the position controller has 3.5k lines, the commander has 5, 5k lines, so it's even more complicated and will take some time, but I think that's next up and uh, it's also, I think, desirable to take some responsibility of the commander and like distribute it to where, where it makes sense to such that you can easily customize uh, your flight behavior. Um, basically, so the question was the, the rate of the update method, right? So the update method is just the call into the library to generate new set points. And the outside determines how fast you generate new set points. So currently, the position controller calls this method, and the position controller runs by default at around 250 hertz, I think. Yeah, so but you could, you could use this flight task library somewhere else and adjust it to your needs, to your platform, to, yeah. But uh, I can also say on that regard that we, we don't need a super high update frequency for position control task because the, the higher bandwidth control, like the rate controller, is uh, further below in the control process pipeline. And uh, yeah, for, for position control to update these attitude set points, it's generally enough to run a bit slower. Last question? Last question. Okay, so I think it's a duplication of a question that we had before and it confirms that we should add this notion of uh, having a task complete its, its, its task basically and, and to be able to continue with something else. Currently, that's not in, but as we see, a lot of people need that and we, we, we should add that in the architecture. Okay, not, not really the last question. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, or the question was the the flight task auto mapper 
what it does. Does it uh, generate flight plans for mapping? And I think the name there is a bit mistaken. The auto mapper flight task is basically a, a task that that takes set points from or waypoints from the navigator and makes them available to all the mission executing flight tasks. So it's a mapping from navigator waypoints to having them available in a in a nice uh, yeah member member variable within the flight task. Yeah, so it's, it's not, not specifically for mapping, but it's for any mission and can be used for mapping. Yeah, and the auto map is not even actually a task that you can call. Right now, it, does, it doesn't have an update method, so it's just not an abstract class, which does some, you know, mapping from the PX4 triples to basically mapping from global to local um, um, set points, such that it's easier for the auto for like the one for the other task which inherits from the auto mapper to do some some computation with it. Thank you guys.